and welcome to Langley TV and this is Gammy's State League 1 South East Round 3 clash between Langwarren and Clifton Hill Langwarren coming off a loss last week away to Malvern City whilst the visitors got 3 points in their last outing in State League 3 What could be a massive week for Lang Warren with an away cup tie up in Albury for the for Murray United and then the massive Anzac Day clash against Mornington. Getting three points here is vitally important for the home side. And we're underway here at Lawton Park. Clifton Hill to get us underway. Out way to Thomas. Gone long, dealt with by Axe. McIntyre loses the ball. Ovchin with a rather tasty challenge. Quick free kick out to Daniel Thomas. He looks to cut inside past Van Heer Warden. He's gone the outside of the boot, just over the bar by Daniel Thomas. Out wide to Selimides. Selimides cutting inside, ball through to Ovchin. Ovchin flashes across the face of goal. Josh Cal just couldn't get there. Still in possession. Cal puts it back in. Selimides again. Cal. He cuts inside. He's still got possession. Deep cross by Thuragood. And Mason into Landy has absolutely crunched Josh Cal. Not sure if he had eyes for the ball there or not, but Cal looks in a bad way and you can see the knee right into the ribs of the Lang Warren striker. I'm gonna need more than magic spray to get rid of that. That looks like a sore one. He's gonna need some attention. Not sure what the referee's given here, but that's not Josh Cal's first worry. Underway here in the second half. Long ball down the right hand side to Selimides. Stood up by Ben Cullen. Selimides trying to find an option. Sam Scott puts the deep cross in. Dealt with rather easily. And I suspected Josh Cow won't take too much part, too much of a further part in this game. Holding the ribs from that clash with Mason into Landy. Hugendijk stretching through it. And the free kick given, I think, for the foul just before that. Cullen with a quick free kick to Daniel Thomas. Daniel Thomas in a lot of space. He sees the gap. He's taken the shot. What a strike by the Clifton Hill captain. Space opened up in front of him. No one closed him down. And he has had a peach of a strike into the top left hand corner. You can see in the replay, he was just left with so much room and some beautiful technique to put that into the top left. Dylan Kellner, long throw, nodded on. Both the overhead kick is Nichols. His eyes lit up there, but he didn't really make the contact he wanted. Salem Medes, Goldworthy, Ovchin. Late challenge on Ovchin. Free kick in a good position here. Nichols the man to take it. Strikes it low and hard. The keeper's fumble. Dead and Thurgood is the man on the spot. Nick Thurgood has put the ball in the back of the net. After Inter Landy couldn't hold the free kick. Not sure what happened there for Mason Inter Landy. He won't want to see that replay again. But we do. And we will see Caleb Nichols, and it bounces just in front of the keeper, Thurgood, right on the spot. The easiest goal he'll score all season. Hugen Dyke puts the ball forward. Van Heer Warden playing the role up front. Solid tackle by Van Heer Warden. 
He's going in on goal. Nichols with a flick on. Oh, it's not going. Oh my god, what's happened there? An on goal for Clifton Hill. And what appeared to be a nothing ball from Caleb Nichols. And the ball has been hit off Oliver Bowen into the back of his own net with only a couple of minutes to go. But don't take anything away from Alex Van Heerwalden, the captain there, creating all the hard work, winning the ball, driving across goal. As we can see, Nichols was hoping someone was behind him. He wasn't expecting it to be a Clifton Hill defender. And well, unfortunate for Clifton Hill, that's a fantastic time to get a goal for Lang Warren. Lang Warren 2, Clifton Hill 1. Axe with a goal kick. Nodded on. Selimides to Nichols. Selimides again, holds the ball. And full time here at Lawton Park. Fantastic result for Lang Warren. The fans love it. It's three points, it's a late winner, and it's Lang Warren 2, Clifton Hill 1. Langley TV caught up with winning coach Gus McLeod after the game. Gus, a fantastic result in injury time there. How do you reflect on that one? Yeah, I thought in the first half we had plenty of possession and uh, we had a couple of chances early on, but um, Clifton Hill defended quite well. And uh, it was the same when I got him in at half time. I was pleased with the effort. Just the passing was a wee bit off the day and the decision making. But in saying that, when I got him in at half time, I just told him to relax and, and start passing the ball a bit. Um, but it was a great goal they scored by Jeffers. A wee bit disappointed in uh, the closing down there. Um, we went to sleep a little bit there, so that annoyed me. But I always knew that we would come back and uh, we just uh, threw a big alley up front and went man for man at the back. Um, and then at the end up, I had to um, throw a couple of the young boys on. So I'm well, pleased, uh, you know, when you get three points and you come back for one nil down. And Clifton Hill are a, a good side. <laughs> Don't worry about that. They, 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 I think they battered Spring, South Springville last week. So for us to, um, but we've got to win at home, Liam. This is your fortress. Um, so uh, it was a tough result last week. You've also got two massive games coming up in the in the next seven days. Uh, getting a, getting a three points on the board today. It's more for confidence for anything, you know, and uh, obviously on Wednesday when we got to play Murray United, uh, there will be some of the boys missing, but this gives the young boys a chance to step up in the cup and, you know, um, it's great experience for them. And the, the bus trip's a good experience too, and uh, well, I'll be very honest, if we got and get a result, we'll be delighted, but if we don't, then it'll be a great experience, as I say, for some of the younger boys. And then we're going to have a late session Thursday, uh, Friday, and then we look forward to playing Mornington at Mornington and uh, Anzac uh, on the Sunday. Anzac Day, I think it is their... Uh, they're having it and uh, it's a big day for them, so it's a big day for us. But um, the more confidence we get, obviously, uh, when we go and play Mornington, we'd like to think we can match them, you know. Also, you said a huge week coming up. It was a slightly uh, bare squad at the moment and you said you mentioned a couple of young boys coming up. Uh, how do you think the young boys did when they came on? Excellent. Yeah, you know, they've got a lot of energy, young boys, and especially when uh, the game's as tight as that. And uh, I knew Brandon's always going to work hard and, and CK's going to work hard. And Big Cut, Big Cut's so close to being in the first team, it's no funny. So um, when you've got three boys like that, it makes uh, for the future. You know, we could have at the start of the season done what some clubs have done and spent stupid money and... Uh, and obviously with no promotion this year, we'll, we'll try and get these boys as much game time as possible. I mean, that's the name of the game, but delighted with the fight back, the character, and, and Lang is a fortress, and it's got to stay that way, you know. Was there ever any doubt that the result was going to come in the end? Uh, to be honest, I was I was ended up saying, well, I'll take the point, you know, 1-1, one, one. Um, but the boys' character and the fitness is great, you know, and we've... Big Alistair um, Wallace is, is, is working them um, with a strength and fitness idea, and it's really it is shown. And um, I'm, I'm very pleased with it overall. But last week I wasn't pleased. This week I am, and that's a, that's a week week to week as a coach. I mean, I think a draw might have been a, a perfect result, you know, for them um, because uh, we did put them under severe pressure. Gus, thanks very much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you.